Hello, I'm Ron Clymer. I'm at Clymer School of Real Estate in Orlando, Florida. And I'm going to set this timer for 15 minutes and I'm going to try to teach some stuff here from the broker's class. Now, if you're taking the salesman's class to get your sales associate license, this information might be a little bit beyond what you need to know. It wouldn't hurt you to watch it, but it's not really what you need. You need to go to some of my other tapes. This is for broker students, people that are getting their broker's license. They've already got a sales associate's license, and they're getting their broker's license. Now, one of the things that you have to know is how to do a pro forma statement. This is a pro forma statement. Starts here with potential gross income, subtract vacancy and collection, add any miscellaneous income, gives you the effective gross income, minus expenses. Now expenses are fixed, variable, and we also have a thing called reserves for replacement. Now you subtract the expenses from the effective gross income and that gives you the net operating income. Now the net operating income is how we ascertain the value of the property. However, it's not the whole thing, but that's what that is so far. By the way, did y'all get that I'm with Climber School of Real Estate? Because I'm going to take this, this sign down, but that's my phone number if for any reason you should need to call me. Like maybe if you wanted to come take my broker's class live and in person, or if you uh, wanted to take a broker's class online, what a great place to take it, Climber School of Real Estate. But let's take a look here, and let's say we have a 10-unit apartment building that rents for $1,000 per month. It has a 10% vacancy, and the expenses for this property are $40,000 a year. Now, the expenses are the taxes, uh, all the things, the lawn maintenance, pool cleanup, and all that sort of stuff. Now, included in that $40,000 is $2,000, what we call reserves for replacement. Now, I probably won't make it clear in this video why that's important, but it'll become clear before we're finished here. And this property is for sale for $800,000. And we're trying to decide, is this property a good buy or is it, uh, is it not? Now, we have our pro forma statement. Starts out with our potential gross income. Our potential gross income, and by the way, I'm going to have to interrupt myself and go get myself a calculator. And you do the same if you don't have one. Pardon that, but this is a budget operation. I'm the cameraman, I'm the star, I'm everything here. And so we got a thousand dollar per month income times 10 units. A thousand dollars times 10 that's $10,000 per year times 12 months. So our potential gross income is $120,000. That's our potential gross income. Now, we've got our vacancy and collection, which is 10%. 10%, and by the way, I'm going to do all of this math as we go. And I would urge you to take your calculator and do it with me. So I'm going to take the $120,000 times 0.10. So that's $12,000 vacancy and collection. That's $12,000 that's not ever going to come in the front door. Now, we don't have any miscellaneous income with this property. Well, let's assign ourselves some. Let's give ourselves a thousand dollars a year. Uh, this would be like the laundromat down under the stairs or the Coke machine out by the pool or something like that. So let's say we've got a thousand dollars a year in miscellaneous income. So we're going to add that. So we got a hundred and twenty thousand dollars minus twelve thousand plus a thousand. So our effective gross income is $109,000. $109,000 is our effective gross income. Pardon me for writing too big there. Now our expenses 
given in the problem are $40,000. So we're going to subtract $40,000 from the $109,000. Hold on, I'm going to use a calculator. $109,000 minus $40,000. My calculator says $69,000 is the net income, the net income of this property. Now, that's the net income of this property. Now, how do we determine the value of the property? I'm going to erase all of this except the price. I'm going to erase this mainly because I'm kind of short on board space. Now, our, in our net operating income is this. Now, does everybody remember we learned this in salesman's class, we went over it in 45 hour class, and here it is again in broker class. If you take I, which stands for net income, R, which stands for capitalization rate, V, which stands for value. You cover up the one you're looking for. So if we're looking for the value of this property, value equals income divided by rate. If we're looking for the capitalization rate, the formula is income divided by value. Well, if we buy this property for $800,000, the price that the seller is asking, what will be our capitalization rate? Here's how we figure it out. Rate equals I over V. V is the $800,000 price that the seller is asking for. So the seller says, I want $800,000. Property generates $69,000 in net income. Well, let's take the $69,000. Let's divide it by the $800,000. And my calculator says that's going to give us an 8.6% capitalization rate. So if we buy this property for 800,000 cash, we'll get an 8.6% return on our investment. Well, what if we got together with an investor, we're trying to sell him this property, and he says the only way I'll buy that property is if I can get an 11% rate of return on my money. How do we get an 11% rate of return? buy the property cheaper. Buy the property cheaper. How much cheaper? Here's the formula. We take I over RV. Now we're looking for the value. We're looking for the value. So the formula is value equals I over R. Mr. Investor says he wants an 11% rate of return. Property generates 69,000 in income. Hold on, I have to use the calculator. $69,000 divided by 0.11. And my calculator says this property is worth $627,000. Let's call it 300. So my buyer says, if I can buy that property for $627,300, I'm in. So I say, well, let's try that. And we, we submit an offer for $627,300, and the seller says, I'll take it. So the seller says, I'll take it, and our buyer is going to get an 11% capitalization rate on his money. Now y'all remember that price there because I might have an occasion to forget it. Now, if we buy that property for $627,300 cash, the buyer is going to get 11% return. But nine chances out of 10, we're not going to buy that property for cash. We're probably going to buy that property for payments. Well, let's say we put 20% down payment, all right? What's 20% of that price? Well, let's see. 6, 
27, 300 times 0.20, that would be 125,000.